So the initial study I did looked at 71 men who, um, prior to taking finasteride, they, these were young, healthy men. They had no medical problems. They had no psychiatric problems. They were on no medications, and they decided to take finasteride for their hair loss or to prevent hair loss. And while on the medication, they developed sexual side effects. And then they stopped the medication, but the sexual side effects never went away. And what, what did you find with those six patients um, in the, um, the, the study about suicides? Did you find that they had previous um, neuropsychological pro problems or what, what were the, the results of that study? So those six patients were pretty healthy for the most part. Uh, they were younger men who didn't really have medical or psychiatric, known medical or psychiatric diagnoses prior to taking this. And I definitely had some patients tell me uh, some, some um, thoughts that they'd rather not be alive if this were continuing to uh, bother them. And that's obviously very concerning. So it's unfortunate that uh, many doctors are skeptical to the point that they do not believe their patients who know their bodies best. And much of the skepticism stems from a lack of knowledge about this medication and that the persistent adverse effects were first published in 2011. There's some clear clinical features of the disease that remain unacknowledged. So, you know, one of them, for example, is called the crash. I'm sure you're familiar with it. Um, many patients experience it. It's basically where there's a dramatic development of or worsening of symptoms after stopping the medication. What do you think can be done in the medical community then to increase awareness and acceptance of, you know, a rare condition, but one that has some important atypical features? So I think to increase awareness, I would suggest that patients go to their doctors prepared to have an intelligent discussion about PFS. So patients should actually bring to their doctors copies of the important peer review articles in case their doctors are unfamiliar with these articles. So the doctors can actually read the articles um, and then familiarize themselves with the symptoms. So people need to know that all studies have limitations, including randomized clinical trials. So if a potential side effect is, let's say, one in a thousand, and they only enroll 900 patients, they may not even get the one who has that rare side effect. It doesn't mean that the drug is safe and that it doesn't occur in that one in a thousand.